number one, Radio Mike, Norway, Radio Mexico. Roger, Romeo, Mexico. This is uh, KC9VKV, the Friday afternoon QSO v uh, What's the name there? KC9VKV, the Friday afternoon QSO v uh, What's the name there? The name here is Rick, uh, located in Northern Virginia. Okay, Rick, uh, you got a lightning hit on your location. Try again on the location. Okay, Rick, uh, you got a lightning hit on your location. Try again on the location. Yeah, we're uh, in uh, Renfrew, uh, Great Falls, Virginia, northern uh, part of uh, Virginia. Roger, copy Virginia, and uh, what radio are you running, Rick? Roger, copy Virginia, and uh, what radio are you running, Rick? Uh, this is an Helicraft uh, K4. With about, uh, Roger, uh, Rick, um, uh, I'd miss your radio. Try one more time on your radio, please. Sure. Uh, I'd miss your radio. Try one more time on your radio, please. That's the telegraph. King 4. 204. A King 4, Roger, Roger. And uh, gosh, uh, if you'd be interested in a setup procedure, it uh, starts with uh, you engaging your compressor at a three. It's a token amount, but it's uh, what we need to uh, start our uh, transmitter setup, Roger. It's uh, what we need to uh, start our uh, transmitter setup, Roger. Okay, this is uh, compression level at three. Compression level at three. Roger, Roger, Rick. Now uh, move to your ALC with the mic gain in hand. And as you speak fairly rapidly, 100, 200, 300, I want you to adjust the mic gain until your ALC is reading mid-scale to two-thirds. Mid-scale to two-thirds on the ALC meter by way of mic gain manipulation. Two-thirds on the ALC meter by way of mic gain manipulation. November 1, Romeo Mike. November 1, Romeo Mike at uh, ALC is about 5 out of 7 on the peak. Uh, Roger that, Roger that. Now, uh, uh, why don't you give me about uh, 10 seconds and uh, tell me about your antenna system and let me hear you. Seconds and tell me about your antenna system and let me hear you. This is November 1, Romeo Mike. A DB18E at about uh, 70 feet, uh, running two elements on uh, 40 meters uh, pointed uh, west at this point. Is that one RF? Roger, Roger, Rick, uh, for the moment I have you on my local antenna, so uh, if you know where your uh, EQ uh, page is, go to your EQ and uh, uh, tell me what uh, what the readings are. Is that a three-band EQ on that radio or, or a multi-band, uh, eight-band or whatever? Yeah, it's a multi-band uh, EQ. Uh, I think I have it set flat right now. Let me look at it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's set flat and it's uh, got eight bands. Okay, sir, we're looking for something up around the uh, top, uh, the treble side, up around the top end of the EQ at around uh, 2.5, 2.8 in that uh, realm. Uh, do you see anything in that realm, uh, Roger? Yeah, I've got, uh, I've got a slider at uh, 2400 and at 3200 hertz. Okay, take the uh, slider at 24 and increase it four clicks hotter than what it is. Four clicks hotter than what it is at the moment. Okay, this is uh, with plus 4 dB, plus 4 dB at uh, 2400 hertz, over. Alrighty, and then do you have something around uh, 200 cycles, 180 cycles or so? Yeah, I've got 200. Okay, 200 plus 4 uh, clicks from where it is. 200 uh, cycles plus 4 from where it is. Uh, I'm sorry, we doubled on that last, to repeat your last transmission? Yeah, I have, uh, this is plus 4, 200, and I also left the plus 4 at 2,400, is that right? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, and uh, that you say you have something at 32, 3.2? Uh, yeah, that's correct, uh, but my uh, transmit bandwidth is limited at 2.9K right now. Roger, you are running at 100 to 2,900, Roger? Uh, that's correct. Okay, could you double check that real quick? Okay, I've got it up to 3 kilohertz. It was at 2.9 before, and I've got it up to 3. 
Yeah, t take it back to 2.9. I, I don't like to see anything past 2.9. I just wanted to be sure that uh, indeed you were in the 100 to 2900 uh, band pass. Roger. Yeah, Roger. That's, uh, that's where we're at. And um, I think uh, the, the EQ uh, uh, limits the bandwidth pretty significantly. Actually, not the EQ, but the compressor on this thing uh, cools with the bandwidth quite a bit. Uh, Roger. Well, uh, let's go to that uh, 32. Uh, 3.2, and that would uh, make uh, plus four clicks uh, boost at uh, 3.2. Roger. Okay, this is plus four dB at uh, 3200 hertz uh, and one RM. Alrighty, now let's go to the back to the. Oh, we want to double check one thing. We should have everything from uh, like 1.2. Five down to about uh, 800 cycles. That all should be flat. Roger. Right. Yeah, the bands are from 400 to uh, 1600 hertz uh, are all flat. Uh, to uh, 1.6, are you saying? Yeah, 1.6, correct. Okay. Uh, I'm looking for a little more bottom end, so let's go back down to that uh, 180 and maybe... Uh, uh, Four more clicks uh, boost, just to see where that puts us, Roger. Okay, this is uh, plus eight at 200 hertz, plus eight at 200. Sounds pretty good. Uh, just, uh, let's see here, uh, next one from uh, 180 would be uh, 80 or something? Oh, down? Uh, yeah, the lowest one is 100. Okay, uh, let's uh, take 100 up uh uh, boost four clicks. 100 boost four clicks. Roger, this is 100 uh, boost uh, 4 dB. Alrighty, and uh, tell me uh, in about 10 seconds or so what you like about your radio. Well, it's uh, it's new. <laughs> Got a great display, wonderful, uh, a wonderful uh, uh, spectrum display. Uh, pretty easy to operate, uh, although I'm still figuring that out. I've only had it a few weeks. Uh, and, you know, it's uh, brand new, so it's got a few bugs that are gradually getting fixed. Uh, but it's, uh, it seems to be uh, quite good. I love the noise reduction on the scene, and uh, I love the uh, noise tanker as well. Uh, roger, roger. Uh, just be aware now, your noise blanker... Uh contributes uh, distortion at, uh, in, the, in the audio to some degree. Uh, and uh, your noise uh, reduction also introduces uh, a little uh, reverb kind of echo thing. Uh, and, well, uh, I'm speaking of a 7300, so I, I really don't know about, about your particular radio. But, uh, you know, every time you do something that affects the... Uh, the, the trueness of the signal, then it's going to have some kind of uh, usually uh, opposing effect. <laughs> you don't get nothing for free. So, uh, you know, uh, if you have a high noise level, high impulse noise levels, you know, then, you know, that's, you would want to run the, uh, the noise blanker. But if you're, you know, fairly quiet, uh, I would uh, try to just use that, just minimal, you know. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's always been my policy. Uh, every radio I've had, uh, I, I would try to leave things uh, out of the signal processing path unless they're uh, they're doing me some good. But uh, yeah, yeah, I uh, understand that completely. Well, the the, the nice thing about the noise reduction on this radio compared to the K3, the predecessor, is that it uh, the, the filters are a, a lot cleaner. They don't ring as much as the as the other ones. But uh, I still generally don't run it unless I'm really trying to dig something out. Roger, Rick. All right, I think uh, I think we're about done. I mean, you know, you have a nice uh, clear signal, clean signal, a good modulation level, uh, about uh, 3 to 4 dB, uh, dynamic range, uh, so it's exactly what we're looking for there. We could crank in some more bottom end, but the problem is when you run a lot of bottom end, you have to keep a balance of top end to keep it balanced. And uh, Mother Nature, a lot of times, will uh, do uh, funky things like uh, uh, phase cancel, cancellation uh, when uh, uh, not all of the signal is bent back to uh, uh, Earth in, in that sky wave uh, at the same point and some of it's uh, reflected uh, just a little bit uh, down the road which changes the phase angle to the uh, 
to the other bounce signal. So when they com come together at somebody else's antenna, uh, the top end uh, could be slightly out of phase with itself uh, from reflection one to reflection two, and uh, uh, you know cancellation starts happening if when they th when those audio signals get out of phase with each other, and it starts canceling from the top. So uh, you know here you go. Uh, you know, a phase cancellation occurs and, uh, to some degree and you start losing your top end. And you've got all this bottom end uh, that's uh, still there. It hasn't been affected. So your your balance uh, just gets destroyed. So I, you know, tend to not to crank in a, a whole lot on the bottom end. Roger? Yeah, Roger. Yeah, well, I think, uh, you know, I'm an old telecom guy, so I, uh, I, I don't put much stock. Uh, when, when I'm just working contests, I don't like to waste power below 300 hertz, so uh, there's not much intelligibility down there, although it is a lot more pleasant to listen to. So uh, I, I think the way the EQ is set up right now, it sounds like there's a good res to uh, 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 profile for it. Uh, but I tend to, uh, you know, keep things uh, kind of like Bob Heil uh, advises uh, during contests uh, for intelligibility more than uh, it's pleasant to listen to. Uh, roger that, roger that. Well, I'm looking at your uh, your audio signal on a spectrum analyzer there, and, and on my antenna at my local receiver, which is good down to 100 cycles, and it looks like you're rolling uh, out your audio at about uh, 250 or so, somewhere in there. But uh, it sounds uh, sounds very nice. I would, you know, if you roll out sooner than that, you're going to be uh, very mid-rangey and not necessarily utilizing all of the the intelligent uh, band pass that you would have there, because uh, everything happy, you know, every Every part of the audio signal is important for uh, to be able to understand. The bottom end after uh, 250 cycles is not that important, but uh, from 250 uh, cycles on up to uh, uh, 3K, that's uh, what we're looking for to uh, be uh, uh, very clean and, and loud. Roger? Yeah, Roger that. Just out of curiosity, what does it look now? All I did was uh, put the compressor at zero. Did that, I, I, I've heard uh, from the Bob Sherwood report that... Uh, it actually does affect the uh, the uh, audio pass band on transmit. Well, what you need to do is go back and double check your ALC because anytime, anytime you change anything in the audio processing uh, system, you need to go back to your ALC. It's the it's the Bible Bible to your radio, and uh, so if you change, uh, and, and it's the last thing that uh, that ALC is looking actually at the output from the limiter on your radio, which you you know you can't really get to except by way of mic gain driving the front end of the limiter and and the uh, output is being monitored by your ALC meter so uh, anytime that you change something in the cha in the uh, uh, audio channel uh, from compression EQ whatever you need to go double d back and double check your ALC uh, level Roger yeah Roger that well yeah the ALC is uh, it's pretty much at the same level as before I was interested mainly in the uh, the shape of the audio pass band if uh, when I pull the compression out, uh, irrespective of the level, overall level, uh, what did the shape look like? Did the bottom end come up at all? No, uh -uh. it's about, about the same. Uh, I, I would suggest, though, that you get a windscreen for that mic uh, to avoid uh, any, any mouth noises, uh, plosives. Uh, or you may have one already, but I would uh, definitely run a windscreen uh, with that mic because uh, you were doing some uh, mouth noises and plosives, Roger. Roger. Yeah, I had it a little bit close, and I do have a little bit now. Okay, so that's interesting. Okay. I'll have to pull with the mic gain and, uh, and the distance for the, uh, the mic. I appreciate that comment. That's very helpful. Yes, sir. Well, I think we got you there. I think uh, that bottom end that we cranked in there uh, and the top end, I, I think both of those uh, help to increase the width of your bandpass audio-wise, your audio curve, if you will. And uh, I think uh, you were maybe uh, m really mid-rangey there, and uh, now you, I think you have a fuller signal, uh, still well within the, uh, uh, the contest uh, criteria for uh, punching through. Roger. Coupled across here, I'm going to be running a, uh, a station for uh, the 13 colonies here starting in about a half an hour. So 
I figured uh, with a new radio, we didn't have to get an audio check. So I appreciate it. Uh, KC9 TKD, November 1, Romeo Mike. Roger, Roger, Rick. And I would run maybe uh, for the next day or so uh, with the ALC meter on uh, and uh, just uh, to uh, double check that uh, you're mid scale to two thirds and, uh, you know, maybe doing a little touch up there. So, uh, you know, if you just had your ALC meter up, you could just hit your mic in a little bit and touch it up uh, to run uh, as best you can mid scale to two thirds, which would give you that uh, 3 dB dynamic range with an average percent of peak modulation of 80 to 85 yeah, percent. Yeah, will do. Well, that's the one nice thing about this radio is that when, uh, when you go to transmit, it brings up power out. Uh, when, uh, when you go to transmit, it brings up power out. Uh, and see all those, uh, all those meters come a little bit. So you can monitor uh, everything. And then when you go back to receive, it just brings up the other or on the uh, phone. So uh, anyway, I'm, I'm having a ball with this radio. It's, uh, it's really new. And, uh, yeah. and, uh, Still, like I say, learning it, but uh, you've been very helpful. I appreciate uh, you giving me the critical listen. November 1, Romeo Mike. Roger, Roger, Rick, and FYI, you're sounding good down in Georgia and Arlington, Virginia, Milford, and Rochester, and they're all uh, uh, singing your praises. <laughs> I've got uh, those four SDRs on a rotary switch along with my local receiver audio, so it, within uh, half a second I can go through uh, uh, five different receivers and uh, uh, know what's happening um, all across the, the uh, country, actually, uh, uh, for your signal. So, And you can see I have a thing called an uh, input uh, source indicator, which is a group of lights in a row, and they will tell you uh, what SDR that I'm on at the moment uh, or my local receiver, and you can see those moving around. So if you want to hear your audio and uh, see that, uh, you would go to YouTube and do a call at a search for KC9VKV, followed by today's date 7 221, and that will take you directly to this recording. And uh, so we'll say 73 for now, Roger. So we'll say 73 for now, Roger. 73, yeah, what's the name now? The call sign is Kilo Charlie 9 Victor Kilo Victor. Repeat. Kilo Charlie 9 Victor Kilo Victor. The name is Jim Juliet India Mike. This is Jim Juliet India Mike. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. You have a wonderful afternoon and uh, stay safe. November 1, Romeo Mike, 73. Roger, Roger, Rick, 73, sir. Have a good afternoon, great weekend. This is KC9 VKV, the Friday afternoon QSO VLOG net. If you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout.